everybody. I'm Dr. Matthew Gianetti, uh, and today I'd like to review a hot topic in systemic mastocytosis, the difference between clonal and non-clonal disorders, as well as updates to mast cell activation disorder guidelines. I'd first like to start with a conceptual depiction of mast cell activation disorders, and I think this is really helpful to contextualize uh, what the specific disorders are and how they overlap. So if you see here in the big uh, blue circle, these are all disorders associated with mast cell activation. This is what most of us general practicing allergists will see in their clinic. And then you can see in black, the smaller circle mast cell activation syndrome, um, which is characterized by severe activation of mast cells. And then the, the red circle is clonal mast cell disorders. So this is systemic mastocytosis, and it would include all variants of systemic mastocytosis. And then finally up in the top right here is hereditary alpha tryptosemia, um, which, which is a new condition that was discovered in 2016, but also presents with an elevated tryptase and is very important to differentiate from systemic mastocytosis. So when I think about the mast cell activation disorders, I really classify it into three separate categories. So the first category um, is gonna be mastocytosis. So this includes all variants of mastocytosis, non-advanced variants as well as advanced variants. And really this is characterized by an overproduction of mast cells, um, classically driven by activating mutations in KIT, such as KIT D816V. And then we think of these as either cutaneous uh, or systemic, and the systemic variants are further subdivided into advanced or non-advanced. Non-clonal mast cell activation syndrome uh, is going to be characterized by mast cell activation, so release of mediators and mediator-driven symptoms, but a normal number of mast cells, which is in stark contrast to the clonal mast cell disorders. And then finally, briefly on alpha tryptosemia, this is a genetic trait not considered a disease, uh, and it's present in about 5 to 7% of the population. So you'll hear in some of our other talks uh, talking about the importance of checking a baseline serum tryptase. This is actually the most common reason in humans to have an elevated baseline serum tryptase. And it's important to note here, too, that this is not always associated with mast cell activation. The final thing I'd like to cover is the updated guidelines for mast cell activation disorders. Um, these were updated in 2022, and they were, they were revised to conceptualize mast cell activation as an acute event rather than a chronic ongoing process. So um, we'll share a link to the actual paper here in the literature, but the guidelines are somewhat confusing. So I, I like to frame it in a, in a two-step process, which I think is very easy to understand. So the first process is diagnose a mast cell activation event. And the second cause, the second process is to determine the cause of mast cell activation. Um, so in order to diagnose an event, we're gonna rely on several criteria. First, symptoms that are compatible with mast cell activation. So if your patient breaks out in hives, has wheezing, uh, vomiting, and diarrhea, suddenly those symptoms are absolutely compatible with mast cell activation. The second thing that they would need would be an objective increase in mediators. So if we checked tryptase during the time of anaphylaxis, it would rise nicely. And finally, these symptoms have to be modulated or controlled in some way with mast cell mediator therapy, such as antihistamines, omalizumab, montelukast, etc. Once you've determined that there has been a mast cell activation event, the next cause, the next step is to determine why are they having mast cell activation. When we think about causes of mast cell activation, it can be largely divided into clonal and non-clonal as we talked about. Um, with some other uh, contribution from alpha tryptosemia and idiopathic mast cell activation. The important thing to note here is that once you have diagnosed a mast cell activation event, it's important to start additional workup, as you'll see in our future talks, to diagnose um, systemic mastocytosis if present, and then more importantly, to um, accurately subtype the type of systemic mastocytosis, because this really sets the stage for appropriate therapy um, and the risk involved in therapy. So we have plenty more uh, to discuss about systemic mastocytosis, so please subscribe to Exchange CME's YouTube channel and check back frequently for more information about systemic mastocytosis and other mast cell activation disorders.